The next Assassin's Creed is Assassin's Creed Syndicate and is set in Victorian London. So said publisher Ubisoft in its big unveiling, which corroborated a bunch of leaks and rumours about this year's AC, but also gave us heaps of details, several minutes of revealing gameplay and some fetching facial hair. With all that in hand, let's get right to the pertinent points. Here's what you need to know. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Jacob and Evie Fry. Rumours of two playable protagonists were confirmed in the reveal of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, in which it turns out you'll play both Jacob and Evie Fry. Damn it, boys! Deal with this! They're twins and therefore share an assassin ancestry, because that's how twins work. Brother Jacob features more prominently in the gameplay reveal and narrates the trailer, so we're going to predict he's properly the star of the show. You can switch freely between the twins during Assassin's Creed Syndicate's open world experience, says IGN, while the main missions will force you to play as one or the other twin for story reasons. Can't talk now, Henry. Duty calls. To your health. The developers describe Jacob as brasher, more brutal and more confrontational than his twin sis, which is borne out by how much more headbutting he does, which is a lot. You'd need to consolidate your control. I can keep the rival gangs and the police from sweeping in and seizing the territory. Meanwhile, Evie is a stealthier, more calculated type, and each twin has their own separate skill tree that plays to their strengths. Apologies, Mr. Green. They're like the Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch of Victorian times, except with stabbing instead of mutant superpowers. <laughs> The twins belong to a street gang called the Rooks, taken from the slang term rookery, meaning a city slum, on account of the nesting habits of rooks. Assassins love birds for reasons we've long since forgotten, so it all works out rather nicely. See? I'll bet that's a rook head on top of Jacob's sneaky sword disguised as a cane. The Fry twins come from Crawley, which is a town near London, and were born in 1847, which is in the Victorian era, which brings us exactly to... Jacob and Evie's stomping ground is Victorian London, though a bit earlier than we expected. Everyone was anticipating a game set in the era of Jack the Ripper, the late 1880s, but Assassin's Creed Syndicate takes place some 20 years prior, in 1868. Still, while we'll mercifully be spared the disemboweled prostitutes, probably, there's plenty going on in the smoke during the other swinging 60s. The Industrial Revolution means a rash of new technology, but also an increasing divide between the upper class and the working class. Innovations really taking off at this time of technological upheaval include electricity, steam trains and the telegraph, which was like Twitter but better because you could have more than 140 characters, so expect these to feature. In fact, there's an extra mission called Runaway Train that comes with the special editions. I wonder what that has in it? London landmarks already confirmed for clambering include Charing Cross Railway Station, which gets its own special edition of the game, weirdly, the enormous Cathedral of St Paul's, the Palace of Westminster, where Big Ben is, and Buckingham Palace, aka Queen Victoria's Crib. Your allies will include novelist Charles Dickens and naturalist Charles Darwin. No, that's not someone who walks around naked, that's naturist. So yes, expect bitter class struggles, soot-belching chimneys, and more grating apples and pears cockney accents than you could shake your fancy cane at. Core blimey. It wouldn't be Victorian London without horse-drawn carriages trundling all over the place. And so look, horse-drawn carriages trundling all over the place. That's Assassin's Creed Syndicate's new traffic system at work. The system produces streets bustling with old-timey traffic, like a slower, horsier Grand Theft Auto. And they're not just there for looking at. Let's go. You can drive the carriages yourself, as we see here, engage in street races, and also smash them to matchsticks if you're not careful. The horse seems more durable, so that's lucky. On account of how the tops of Victorian carriages were conveniently flat, you can also jump between carriages and apparently stand on them to tell people they work for you now. As of this moment, you all work for us. In other vehicle-related fun, you'll also be able to chug along in steamboats rather than having to swim in the stinky Victorian Thames, leap onto moving trains that steam across the city, and use those carriages as mobile hiding spots. If you'd prefer to hoof it on foot rather than hoof it on, uh, hooves, then there are new options for traversing the city rooftops as well. They wouldn't actually call it parkour because that wouldn't be a thing for another century, but there you go. Do you ever think Assassin's Creed games would be better if they didn't include all that tedious climbing? Well, good news, because Assassin's Creed Syndicate kits you out with an upgraded Assassin's Gauntlet, here it is, which comes with a rope launch that you can use to scale buildings in seconds, or zipline between rooftops. You're basically an Industrial Revolution Batman, only without that inconvenient code about not killing people. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Syndicate features yet another new combat system. Maybe this time they'll get it right, hey? Still, it's looking good with a focus on fast-paced, brutal, close-range combat that fits with the gang warfare and street brawls of the story. 
as it's not the 18th century anymore, you can't just walk around with a sword on your hip or you'd be arrested by the recently founded Metropolitan Police, so the weapons of syndicates are smaller and more easily concealed. There's the Kukri, a Nepalese blade traditionally used by Gurkhas that can be thrown and collected again, probably needing a clean. Then there's a revolver that your assassin can use for distance kills and brutal finishers, and also some vicious looking brass knuckles that should give you the edge in a fist fight. You can also expect contextual moves like headbutts, new environmental takedowns and some neat tricks from the previously mentioned Assassin's Gauntlet, including the ability to fire hallucinogenic darts. They work similarly to the berserk darts seen in previous Assassin's Creed games, but now you can fire them into a heat source to generate a cloud with a large area of effect. Finally, as we mentioned, that fancy cane of Jacob secretly has a sword in it if you're hankering for a bit of classic Assassin's Creed sword fighting. But, I mean, you do realise a revolver is a gun, right? On the off chance you don't want to get involved in fisticuffs, there's a new stealth mode activated with a button press, where you swap your top hat for the classic Assassin's hood, which is, somehow, more incognito than a regular hat. There's a reason it's called Assassin's Creed Syndicate instead of the rumoured and much better Assassin's Creed Victory, and that's not just because Ubisoft wanted to troll fans of cyberpunk dubstep shooters. It's because the London of the game is just lousy with gangs, or syndicates as they're known. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Syndicate's London is divided into boroughs, each under a gang's control. There's Westminster, The Strand, the City of London, Whitechapel, Southwark and Lambeth. Each gang is led by a Templar boss and you'll need to build and lead your own gang, the Rooks, to take over each of the areas. Like the Warriors if they were running through 1860s London instead of 1970s New York. In the reveal gameplay, we see Jacob and his gang take out a stronghold belonging to a rival gang known as the Blighters, led by a character named Bloody Nora, which if you're not familiar, is also traditionally an exclamation you might make if you drop something on your toe. If you build up a big enough gang by liberating allies and taking control of enough strongholds, it'll lead to what's known as a gang war, an all-out confrontation for control of the borough, and a missed opportunity for a large-scale dance-off. <laughs> If you've watched this far and all the time been asking, but where are the multiplayer and co-op modes I so enjoy, then I've got some bad news for you. If, however, you're not one of the 12 people who got co-op to work in Assassin's Creed Unity, then you'll be indifferent to hear that Assassin's Creed Syndicate is single player only. Publisher Ubisoft says the decision to leave out multiplayer and co-op was made so the developers could really knuckle down and make the biggest city-based open world in the history of Assassin's Creed. To that end, the London map in Syndicate will be about 30% larger than Paris in Unity. We had some fun with Assassin's Creed multiplayer in the early days, but given how we haven't touched it for years, and how hard it was to get into co-op in Unity, not to mention how restrictive it was when you finally did, this is no great loss for Syndicate. So long, Assassin's Creed co-op, we'll always have Paris. Those are the 7 things you need to know about Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this for much more on the game when we have it. Right, we're off to ponder exactly where Jacob hides that top hat when he switches to stealth mode.